Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Everyone, whether you are joining us here in the space this morning or if you are watching us uh, via, live stream, via live stream or sometime in the future, assalamu alaikum to you. And uh, thank you again for joining another one of our 99 Names of Allah sessions. So last time we covered the names of Al-Wakil, Al-Qawi, and Al-Mateen. Al-Wakil, we mentioned, was the disposer of affairs, the confidant, the trustee, the one in whom you can entrust your affairs to, your protection, your safety, any of your matters, you would entrust it to Al-Wakil. Al-Qawi was the strong, the one who imbued you with strength, the one who provided strength, the source of strength. And Al-Mateen was the steadfast, the one that was firm, the reliable one. And how these names gave us really that shoulder to lean on, but also these names taught us and teach us every day that in anything that we go through, in any challenge we go through, we have Allah, not just as someone who we prostrate to and we ask for help and we, we just hope that Allah will respond, but someone whom we can lean on, someone whom we can internalize, who is a giver of strength, but is also there to help ease our burden and is there as a steadfast, very reliable source of this uh, disposing of affairs and the strength. So we internalize those names again, inshallah, as we go into this name, Al-Wakil, Al-Qawi, and Al-Mateen. So looking ahead for today, inshallah, we will cover some beautiful names, Al-Wali, which is the protective friend, the close one, Al-Hamid, the praiseworthy, the most praised, and Al-Muhsi, Al-Muhsi, the one who knows, the one who counts, the one who records and enumerates. So as always, we begin today with the recitation of the Asma'il Husna, the 99 names. And uh, after the 99 names, we'll discuss these three names for today, inshallah. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And just like we internalized a little bit of Al-Qawi, Al-Mateen, and Al-Waqil, we want to go ahead and internalize these names as well. So we'll go through these a little bit slower like we did yesterday. But just as you hear each name, you see its meaning, really feel it, really internalize it, and just, just sit with it and just let it, let it flow. And so however that is best done for you with eyes closed or whatever it might look like, let's go ahead and let's try that. So inshallah, here we go. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Hu Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahmanir Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus as-Salam المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الهكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيذ المقيت الهسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصع الهكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسن مبدي المعيد 
المحيي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المكسد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار نافع نور هادي البديع الباقي الورث الرشيد الصبور So with these names as always we begin inshallah as i mentioned today the three names we cover are al wali al hamid and al muhsi so let us go ahead and begin inshallah so al wali is the protective friend the close one the protective associate and each divine name as we've gotten through over 50 of them now well over halfway now alhamdulillah as we get through each divine name we see that each of it each of them leaves a really different kind of sweetness a really different kind of touch to the heart and it has different effects on us it has a different effect it sits with us differently it hits different parts of us and so each name has this and al wali is one that really brings a, 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 its own effect its own kind of uh, unique loving effect but also just so much other uh, so many other effects of helping build us up and so this root of al wali comes from uh, or be uh, bears the meanings of to being to being near to somebody to be close to be next to to lie next to to be adjacent to to be a friend to be a helper to be a supporter to be a guardian and a protector or in trust and for people oftentimes it's used as the a friend of allah someone who's close to allah but also lifts up elements of loyalty devotion fidelity and goodwill so when we compared this name al wali to another name which we'll get to al wali the uh, name of al wali because they share the same root al wali stresses first and foremost that intimate loving and personal personal relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah's compassion for us then uh, is is so much greater than that we have for ourselves or those around us. We recall a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which he uh, shows he sees a uh, female companion who's uh, giving um, who, who's nursing her child, and he asks the companions, you know, do you think like you know this this woman could give up her child? Could she give 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 up this baby? And they're like, no, never. And you know, he he then lifted up that. Our Lord Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is even more merciful to us, to the creation, than the mother is to her child. So it tells you how how much more compassion there is from Allah than we can maybe comprehend in our terms, or we can make comparison to. And so Al Wali is not just that, but also the protecting friend of us and all the creation, all the creatures, with that compassion and attention to detail that's there. It's also uh, Al Wali is also the intimate friend of those human beings who truly seek Allah, who truly seek Allah, because in seeking Allah, we see a manifested quality of intimate love, desire to be close to Allah, but also shedding the uh, outer parts for this this world, shedding those uh, different shackles we might take on, our work life shackle, our different types of uh, things that just get in our way, all these different things, we start to remove those and solely be desiring the presence of Allah and and, and, and the company of Allah. And so when, when people ascend to that to that level and people get to that level uh, this name implies the other part as well that Allah comes near yesterday uh, for the khutbah we lifted up a verse of the Quran very famous verse of the Quran in which uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, and when they ask you about me when they ask you concerning me tell them I'm near 
And so it tells you that this is a God, this is a deity, this is a divine entity that doesn't just want to create and turn back the time or set the clock and then watch things go and see how things play out. This is a God that wants to be intimately involved with the creation. This is a God that wants to not only be loved, but love the creation and, and, and be uh, manifest in there. And so you see, it's a much more intimate relationship than oftentimes the conceptions of Allah might be for many of us growing up, my, myself first and foremost. So as we look at this name of Al-Wali, not only is it manifesting that intimate compassion, intimate protection, this name sees and then protects that which is noble in us, that which is worthwhile and worth cultivating and worth strengthening in us. So the good things we have, this name, not only is that blanket protector, again, like I said, there's the literal meaning, there's also the deeper inner meaning. And so sometimes when we look at the outer meaning, we may take it to be, oh, Allah is like the protector, the protecting associate, they'll protect all of me. But how this name hits deep, how it gets at the heart, how it helps to purify the heart, it sees and it protects that which is noble, that which is good in us and helps to cultivate those things, helps to strengthen it. So inspiring our hearts, inspiring our souls and healing those holes, healing those wounded hearts, healing those, those feelings of worry, sorrow, heaviness, loneliness, whatever it may be that's weighing on us, that, uh, that love for Allah kind of fills that source. And so when we open our hearts to this and every single name, we get an opportunity to experience this kind of spiritual fulfillment, the spiritual annealing, the spiritual healing that comes there. And so as human beings, one of the things that distinguishes us from other creation is the potential that we have in our hearts, the potential we have in our consciousness and in our souls that when we take this name, when we take any name, we open our ears to not just the, uh, the, the signs of the world around us, but we really open our ears to all that is around us, especially to the worries of our fellow creation, of our fellow human beings. We keep an eye out for their rights, for their well-being. We use our strength to support them. We help those around us and help uh, open up the, uh, the, the those channels to life. We do this because Al-Wali does it for us. And as with every single attribute that we've mentioned here, as Allah does for us, it doesn't, the buck doesn't stop there. We, we continue that going, that we pay it forward. So, and we are imbued with the protecting friendship when we are imbued with uh, so much love, steadfastness, strength, justice, all these things, we have to pay that forward. We have to carry that forward and, and, and ensure that this quality emanates throughout our world. So in closing Al-Wali, and before we transition to this next name, we see how this name not only helps us be cognizant of other people, but it and, and just outwardly supporting them, it helps us support the spiritual growth, the internal growth of others, and help through them and through ourselves awaken those divine sparks we've been talking about each and every session, is that there's all these sparks that are lying around that have been embedded, and it's up to us now to activate those within us and then help to lift those up in the community and identify those because they are there. We just sometimes have to dig for them. And Al-Wali really does symbolize in, 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 in conclusion here the love and protection that Allah grants those who really revere Allah with a pure heart, but also who have that pure heart, who work on that heart. You don't have to absolutely have that pure heart in order to get this. This is, you can be, that can be a, a work in progress for you there. And so when we look at Al-Wali, when we look at a Wali, when we look at someone who we say, this is a Wali of Allah, this is a Wali of Allah. Oftentimes this Wali of Allah is used uh, for the cousin of the Prophet on the uh, fourth Khalifa, uh, Ali radiallahu anh, that a wali is someone who is connected with Allah, someone who is led and protected by Allah, whose uh, attention is wholly to the creator, closeness to Allah is all they desire, and the shedding of all these uh, material worldly attachments is, is put to the side. But what we lift up from al-wali, and when we lift up for so many of the other names, is consciousness. Because when we talked about yesterday in the khutbah was that there's a verse in the Quran that tells us that fasting has been prescribed for us, that we may become God conscious, that we may become righteous, that we may begin to become God conscious, we may begin to develop righteousness. And tattakun is it comes from that same root of that. And this consciousness actually really means 
not just to be aware that, hey, okay, Allah exists, or hey, okay, I guess I need to be right, but consciousness means to know the essence of the essence of all things and of certain things within ourselves, of things around us, and of things how they come to be. And so when we draw near to Allah, when we take Allah as Al-Wali, when we understand that relationship, when we understand all these names, we become more conscious uh, and we become deeply conscious of not just what these things are, what they're going through, but what their source was. So it helps us become more mindful, inshallah. So we go to the next name, Al-Hamid. Al-Hamid is the praiseworthy, the most praised, has the root uh, containing the same meanings of praise, commending, extolling, highly praising, praiseworthy, you, you get the picture there. So when we praise Allah and when we thank Allah, it's not just to, uh, to, to, to just thank Allah. It's not just to see the, uh, just to see the blessing, but it's, also, it's to see the one who has given it, to see how much effort it took to put this in. It took to see how much care and precision it was to, uh, to bring this to light, whatever that blessing might be. But oftentimes when we receive something that's a blessing, whatever it might look like, we'll just be fixated on that blessing, whether it's a new paycheck or something else, it's all that stuff that comes about. We just focus in on that. And we don't think about that the praise is actually supposed to be to that. We say, Alhamdulillah, great, but now we're focused, our attention is there, but the attention should be vice versa. It should be that I have a creator, I have a God that continues to give this can come, this can go, this phone can come, this phone can go, this paycheck can go up, it can go down, whatever and whatnot. This is alhamdulillah for that, but focusing our attention on the one who deserves that praise, who, who brought this to being. So his name helps us reinforce the need to know before we do, the need to have thought before action. So the need to be able to take a pause and see what evaluate something and then take action it's more profound than just being like okay hey before you do this tell tell allah thank you tell do then it, it, it speaks to a louder uh, a wider range of things and so al hamid uh, in in the aspect of praise in the aspect of gratefulness we talked about the name ashakur earlier al hamid is more comprehensive than ashakur because ashakur is the grateful the the the, the one who uh, emanates gratitude and from whom gratitude comes and to whom gratitude is due but uh, ashakur expresses gratitude uh, sorry al hamid expresses gratitude for everything that comes from allah whereas ashakur is very specific gratefulness for something specific and with ashakur we penetrate the heart. We penetrate the heart with something that touches us and causes us to be thankful, whereas Al-Hamid goes much more broadly and encompasses our whole being. And it knows that everything, that, and it makes us feel that everything that is good, everything that has come to us, that's been given to us is praiseworthy. And so we see this duality with uh, the names of Allah in so many different regards. We, we talk about that uh, in, in repeat of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the uh, sky of mercy versus that laser focused ray of just coming down and making you feel warm. And so we see this relationship in so many other names and Al-Hamid and Al-Shakur lift that up as well. So Al-Hamid uh, gives us this, this insight to a complete being that, that uh, this, this complete entity and this complete feeling of going in praise and being praised, uh, being praised or praising Allah for everything that's there. Just the, the name of the Prophet Muhammad as a, as a side note, also comes from the same root. And it means the one who is highly praised, continuously praised. And so we see a connection there in, in the sense that when we praise the Prophet Muhammad we say the Prophet Muhammad we, we say it sometimes just unconsciously, but someone who was given this name, but then also in that honorific is probably, if not the most praised person who is consistently praised throughout history every single day, consciously, unconsciously, subconsciously by people when they repeat it. And so you see the power of a name like this, that praise for uh, all that exists, praise for that, that all that comes, comes from this name. And so we praise Al-Hamid for all things. We praise Al-Hamid for everything that is around us, that, that we take on and that is blessed to us. And so human beings, us, we give and we receive praise when uh, we show gratefulness for the abundance and the goodness that surrounds us. So we shed that ignorance. We remove uh, ourselves from the center. We really take ourselves away, but we give praise. We give credit. We give all that stuff where it's due and we put ourselves to the side. And so to know that we don't know 
to admit that we don't know, to admit that we're not at the center and that something else is driving this, something else is responsible, is the beginning of knowledge, is the beginning of awareness. To know and to, to not know actually is that beginning of knowledge, to step away from it and say, I don't know. So when we close out with this name, we see that the Praise is the opposite of criticism and disapproval and dissatisfaction. It's a form of gratefulness, but it exists regardless of help, favor, or good deed. It's there. It's continuous. It's always there. And we say this in our salah that alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. All perfect praise is due to Allah. Praise constantly is due to Allah, whatever it looks like. We don't have to have gotten anything to do it. We just give it. It's just there. And so uh, Alhamid really then helps us like so many other names, free up that ego, get away from that ego and move it from dissatisfaction. And in complement, a shakur then helps with that specific dissatisfaction, while al-hamid helps with the overall conquering of the heart to uh, develop a outward look towards praise and an inward look towards praise and to recognize where we're at. So we go into the final name for today, inshallah. Al-Muhsi. Al-Muhsi is the name is the name of the one who knows the one who counts the one who enumerates the one who records so we, we we see this name and none what what comes of it is that none of our thoughts none of our words never our none of our deeds are ever lost oftentimes we'll just think of it as a register that all of this stuff is recorded all this stuff is recorded and it's just like i'm gonna have like all these different transcripts of myself uh, on uh, the before allah and all this will be there but we, 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 and we sometimes get a little bit intimidated by that, and it's understandable. But what we, what we see from this is that we have a, a God, we have a divine entity that doesn't forget, that sees us for who we are throughout our arc of our human life, throughout our arc of our spiritual life. The, this entity cares and sees us. And not, not just in a sense when we're doing bad, not just in a sense when we're just doing good, but sees the whole of us. And so Every we, we lift up this as well as, a, as an encouragement for us to be agents of good. In Islam, we believe that every good deed comes back to us tenfold, and every bad deed comes up back to us just for its for its measure. And so the scales are already kind of favored for us that we are uh, asked to and we are given the odds to do good. And so when we turn ourselves to Allah, when we turn our attention to Allah, when we put ourselves before Allah, we do so with all of our deeds. We do so with all of our deeds. We praise Allah for that which is good, which that is beneficial, which that has been helpful. But we also ask forgiveness for that which we might have come up short on, that which might be bad. But we come accountable to Allah. And that's how we will go accountable to Allah with the full scale of deeds in front of us, not just the greatest things, but the odds are in our favor to favor all these good things. But we come honestly to Allah. So unless we're, if we are living kind of double lives, if we're living a life where we're doing one thing on the side and then putting on a face for something else or ver vice versa, we really do do ourselves injustice and we don't put on that true self. But when it comes to Allah, we want to be cognizant we want to be fully there fully present but fully authentic because then we we have the uh, opportunity to own up for that so forgiveness and repentance are are those antidotes to any harmful deeds that we do that we 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 ask for forgiveness but we also repent we ask we ask for forgiveness and we repent uh, directly to help rem uh, remediate these and so the root of this name of al muhsi is very much like like its translation there that to count to enumerate, to calculate, to compute, to charge in a calculation of sorts. So really all these mathematical type of uh, mathematical type of connotations, but we see the Quran mentioned so many times that if you would, if you were to count Allah's blessings, uh, and if you were to count Allah's blessings, never could you compute them, never could you calculate them. There's just so many that you can't, you can't count that. And Al-Muhsi is the one who knows everything, who assesses everything exactly precisely and has the capacity to know everything in detail in the outer as well as what's within us and nothing as i mentioned gets lost with allah so we make each deed and action count al-muhsi helps us keep honest account with our life and with ourselves it helps us behave openly it helps us behave uh just be cognizant openly but it helps us see that ocean of compassion, that ocean of transformation that really is within us, that we can access so many great things because it's all within us. 
And so Al Musti gives us the capacity to uh, really uh, seek that intention, um, seek that intention to really cultivate a pure intention that underlies our deeds. So we become aware of our intention, that our deeds are judged by our motives. And so this name, first and foremost, makes us aware of like, what, what, what is my intention for doing something or thinking something or any of these things? I was talking to someone yesterday that when we look at ourselves as human beings, when we just look at bar graphs, we look at graphs that, uh, you know, it might be from a company that has had the most success every single year. And their graph is just going to be something like this, like from 1990 or whatever it was up until now, that graph is the same. It hasn't changed. And I asked them, what, what, what are their feelings around that? And they're like, it doesn't say much. I mean, like, okay, that's cool. Like it's, it's just there. Like there's, there's nothing, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing interesting about that. It's, it's just there. It's a given. And then I was like, okay, tell me about a graph that you can see that you have when you start something from very bottom, but it grows. And they're like that, like I, just by naturally, I'm drawn to that graph. Like, I'm curious, like what, what happens next? Like I'm seeing that there's progress. There's obviously work being done. There's change happening. Something's happening that's causing this to change. So it makes me more curious about this. It makes me see and appreciate whatever is going on. So many things that I don't know. And the same on the other side, if it's to go down, what's wrong? Like where, where, where could we have helped? What could we have done? So we see as humans, we're not born or meant to be just these you know, just uh, just uh, monograph, just one uh, one one type of bar all the way through life. We are works in progress. We transform. We go through these stages, but we we aim to go through a stage in 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 the size of like a bar graph, in the size of that we improve. We might not have known something last year or yesterday, but we work to improve it. And so when we look on our lives, we see ourselves going upwards, and we see that at, at a whole scale, not just that. Hey, I was consistent, thirty for thirty, um, while I was alive. I was just that. All right, great, that's there, but. What transformed? Where's that transformation? What, what, what happened to you? What changed? And where was Allah playing into your life? And so you can really see that when you see that graph like that. And so as we close out with Al-Musi, we see that Al-Musi not only gives us the capacity to think about what our intentions are before doing something, but it stimulates our knowledge. It challenges us to think beyond our, our corporeal sense. It promotes sincerity and honesty when we take account that we're authentic with each other, that we're real with each other. And we take into account not just uh, how, how, how these things may uh, enable us to see more clearly, but also how we would like to proceed, how we would like to go forward. We see what we've done. We make an evaluated decision on how to continue, how to change, how to pivot, both in the material and the spiritual. So may Allah make these names a sense of guidance that Al-Musi reminds us of the things we need to take account for. Al-Hamid reminds us whom we praise all these things for. And Al-Wali reminds us that we have in Allah a protecting friend. We have in Allah someone that is rooting for us, someone that is there next to us as we go through this life, inshallah. So we close today with the dhikr of these three names, and we remember them as, as we go out into this day, inshallah, for the rest of Ramadan. So let us go ahead and begin with that. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Wali, 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 Al-Wali. Al-Wali, 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 Al-Wali. Ya-Wali, 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 Ya-Wali. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Alhamid, 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 Ya Hamid, 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 Ya Hamid. 
La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Muhsi, 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 Ya 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 Muhsi. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So brothers and sisters, as you go out, recognize you are not, we are not perfect. We are not um, these monographs that are just one uh, one one stripe across our entire lives we are changing we're transformative and these names allow us to see that it's okay to be people on a path on a path to development and not being perfect that we are working towards that to a creator god that will be there so please take these names inshallah and internalize them and see how they can bring a change in your life and the world around you inshallah we'll see y'all tomorrow